This is MLC TV News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, Kogi State. I am Morno Balagubu. Thanks for joining us. First, the headlines. Infrastructure gap, Buhari says, Nigeria needs $1.5 trillion in 10 years. Governor Yaya Bello decries neglect of federal roads at Jakuta Steel. Senator Smart Adeyemi blows hot as Minister of Health presents budget. And bill to prevent emergency school closure. And now the news in details. President Muhammad Buhari said yesterday that for Nigeria to bridge infrastructure gap, a whooping 1.5 trillion US dollars will be required in the next 10 years. He said such investments will help in achieving an appreciable level of the national infrastructure stock. Buhari spoke on the sidelines of the ongoing 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. The event, which was on improving global infrastructure, was hosted by the United States President Joe Biden, the European Union, and of course, Commission President von der Leyen, and the United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The president's senior special assistant on media and publicity, Gaba Shehu, quoted him as saying Nigeria is ready for investments in infrastructural development and his administration has established a clear legal and regulatory framework for private financing of infrastructure to establish a standard process. The president also declared that his administration had taken infrastructure expansion seriously, conscious of the fact that the new investments in critical sectors of the economy would aid lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by 2030. Buhari lauded the G7 countries for their groundbreaking plan to mobilize hundreds of billions of dollars of infrastructure investment for low- and middle-income countries and is expected to be values-driven, high-standard and transparent infrastructure partnership. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has expressed disappointment over the exclusion of federal roads in the state from the list of roads to be reconstructed and rehabilitated under the 2022 federal budget. Bello expressed his displeasure while responding to questions during the media roundtable at the 29th edition of the Nigerian Merit and Awards NMMA at the Government House in Lokoja. Bello expressed his displeasure while responding to questions during the media roundtable at the 29th edition of the Nigerian Merit Award at the Government House in Lokoja. The governor also decried the seeming lack of commitment to the revival of the Ajakuta Steel Company Limited, ASCL, stressing that the efforts of President Muhammad Buhari to make a real impact on the lives of Nigerians should not be sabotaged. Our reporter, Faith Abdul Kafar, has more. As part of the fourth day's 29th edition of the Nigerian Media Merits Award programs, map out was round table with the state governor Yaya Bello that allowed journalists to ask questions related to infrastructural development, security and other aspects of government responsibilities. Journalists raised concern over some disturbing issues in the state. Are you collaborating with the federal government and just bringing um, reprieve on that road, especially for road users? And if we're talking about investors coming into the state, is that not a turn off for them? Thank you, Your Excellency. Governor Bello worried about the Ajakota Steel Company and the state's federal roads being abandoned. The peace and security that FCT is enjoying today is because of what we're doing here in Kogi State. We are managing not only our own securities in Kogi State here, managing within the limited resources in Kogi State here to hold our citizens and those that are passing through Kogi State here. We are managing also other 10 states because we bother other 10 states in Kogi State here. This is the deprivation that Kogi State is suffering today, my dear sister. We belong to the same political party. Kogi is not an Abda state. Kogi has since left PDP's hand to ABC. Why are we being treated this way? The same treatment that we are being treated that we have observed in the road infrastructure 
That is exactly what we are facing in the completion of our Jaku testing rolling here. That is the same treatment we are face to face in the issue of dragging River Nanga down to Lokoja here. The very administration that is going to take Kogi seriously will be an administration that is going to be fair to this country, and that administration will be ready for economic emancipation of this country. No nation will have a giant investment hub, like we just said, and neglect it. I'm not saying other states are not viable. Other rules are not viable. They are equally viable. So that is what we are suffering here. There have been several calls for agitation by citizens of Kogi State, youth, women, businessmen, but I have been able to pacify them, to be calm and relaxed, because I know surely our president is a president that stands for justice, fairness, and equity. I know surely something is going to be done about that. He said that the Abuja Lokoja road alone was strategic, but has defined completion since the administration of the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo. Governor Bello highlighted some efforts his administration has made to ensure the completion of federal rules within the state. Our National Assembly members have jointly and severally visited Governor Fashola in his office, and nothing has been done. Maybe Koki is no longer part of this country. The keynote speaker, Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Kancheri, Gombe State, Professor Omar Pate, who delivered a lecture titled The Media and Challenges of Nation Building, urged Nigeria, particularly those in leadership positions, to make deliberate attempts at ensuring national integration. Our unemployment rate is hitting at something percent based on statistics from the National Bureau of Statistics. And we cannot continue moving with this type of every year we graduate millions of students. Then the question is, what visible efforts are we making to create hope in the minds of these young people who are coming up? Or do we simply fold our arms, assume that one day we'll just wake up and everybody will be employed in Nigeria and things will be okay? Which is an impossibility. He explains that the various problems confronting the nations we are the result of a departure from the ideals that unites the people. What is NGS, for example, which is just an example, budget for programs related to, let's say, serious documentaries about the nation? When does the do watch a very serious documentary on the history, geography, or even the sociology of our various communities on our TV sessions? It's simple. It is a matter of commercialization. Who will pay for it to be there? And you cannot expect to investigate journalism, serious documentaries, so long as somebody is going to pay for that to happen. It becomes PR. He stressed the need to respect the diversity of the people. Issues happening have their own backgrounds. Some are political, some are historical, but how many of us are even aware of some of these histories? Then, generalized statements not supported by facts and figures on very sensitive national integrative issues. Somebody will simply call us on reporters somewhere, my people are marginalized. And then the next thing you see that black line without facts. Or oh, our people are so, 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 issue of fact checking. So, and this naturally creates problem in the minds of people. Let me give you a very, very simple example. How we ethnicize headlines. I won't deny I'm a full in and out, but when I see Full ID has been so, 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 full ID is full ID that. I feel bad. I don't see Igbo permanent secretary, Yoruba permanent secretary, so, 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 so. So why do we emphasize a criminal is a criminal, whether he is full ID, whether he is Urobo, whether he is Ijo, a criminal is a criminal. What's your thinking and arm against Nigeria by a criminal? So why do you emphasize without even investigating? On the issue of fake news and hate speech, Professor Peter says they are unmiming the process of national integration. The social media has also come with its own brand of problems to add on to the one that we have been managing for now. Of course, the social media has its own blessings, 
limitless, it has created limitless opportunities, brought down boundaries, both physical and imaginary, and brought the world closer. However, in our own case, in addition to these limitless opportunities, it has also brought brand new problems that we have to manage. Of course, head speech has always been with us, but not at the level we are experiencing now because the opportunity to disseminate the head speech is not there. Now, with your chief Android phone, all you need is a data of 100 naira, access to the internet, and you will become a reporter, an editor, the director, as well as whatever you are. And you disseminate information to some few groups, and then the news will go on and on and on, and before we know it, it becomes actual information. But it's all based on lies, you sat in your room to manufacture the lie and distribute it. And this is what we are seeing. So, not only hate speech, it distributes insults. You know it's easier to go on phone and abuse somebody or send a text to abuse it than when you see it face to face. So we are now distributing insults all over the place. Lies, of course fake news. These are all destructive to collective existence, undermines trust, and above all, defeats the purpose of national unity. You don't even know the source, you don't know who the editor is, then you get the information and before you know it, it's gone. And you know information is like a bullet. Once you release it, you cannot retract it. And for us in communication, what we define information is simple. Information is uncertainty management. Once you are not certain about something, you are not informed. Once you are certain, you are informed. So information is creating and setting, I mean creating certainty in the mass of people. And if you create certainty on the basis of ignorance, on the basis of lies, then you are mal informing or misinforming or disinforming, but not informing certainty. And these are the characteristics of fake news. And we see them all over the place. He called for the promotion of media and literacy, especially amongst the youths as they spend much time on social media, as well as a qualitative and quantitative improvement in the living standards of people. The chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Harun Adamo, said the objective of the MMMA was to enumerate the achievements of media practitioners over the years and consolidate on them. Media Roundtable is an event, it's an annual event by the National Nigerian Media Event Award, preceding the evening of performance, evaluation, and performance celebration. So what we are going to see here and learn this afternoon, give us the foretaste of what you will see this evening regarding the performance of men and women. Adamo stressed that the media industry remains venturous, with journalists not sure of their fate when on duty. And for those who venture their capital into it, they do not know whether what they are investing in will give them a high rate of return. Also, and those who involve themselves as practitioners do not know whether they will end up in prison. Governor Bello assured delegates and visiting guests of their safety and urged the NMMA to provide critical motivation for the real journalists to do their work professionally. Faith Abdul Ghaffar reporting for MNC TV. Kogi State Governor Yaya Belu has further emphasized why the journalists should play the balancing role between the government and the people. Governor Belu, who was concerned about the media's roles and responsibilities, said the vibrant press is more powerful than the three arms of government, but raised alarm during the night of the special multimedia presentation of his administration's achievements in the state over the high rate of hate speech. Fatima Yakub has more. Evening of the day two of the 29th edition of the Nigeria Media Merit Award that was held between the 28th and 31st of October 2021 in Lokoja, the state capital. 
It was well attended by members of the national and local organizing committees, the board of trustees, national and international veteran journalists. The governor and top government executives were not left out. A documentary on engaging Kogi today for tomorrow for prospective investors was broadcast. Members of the economic team and state contractors spoke on the state prospects. That was incorporated in Nigeria in the year 2000. And since high operation, it has done so well to position itself as one of the most notable international companies in Nigeria having delivered quality and most profitable projects in the infrastructural development drive of this government. To this end, tech engineering has done and delivered some projects under this government, notable among which is the Ida Ajaka and Iba Road, the and Bat Township Road and Bat Township Road, the, the ongoing Lokuja Township Road, and most notably, the Ganaja Flyover Project. Reporters across the globe engaged the governor in question and answer segment. Your Excellency, can you please tell us what your administration is doing to attract more foreign direct investments in Kogi? We all know that Kogi State has three major and many more minor uh, tribes. How were you just to other tribes or to the tribes in Kogi State? Sir? Are you creating sustainable institutions in Kogi that will lead the government and that will help grow the state? The uh, questions on the Chinese reporter. It's trying to know what are we doing to attract more investments and in what area? Well, first, no investor will invest in any country, state, or in any area whatsoever if the place or in the environment is not secure. And However, you travel, you organize, or you attend talk shows, economic summits, investment summits, however you organize them, you attend them, if the environment is not safe, no investor will take their money to where the investment will not be safe. Their personnel will not be safe, their assets will not be safe. So what I mean more in Cookie State is to ensure that Cookie State continue to be safe and safer. The House of Reporter wants to know whether I'm just to other tribes. I'm sure you know that the problem we face today in this country is issue of uh, uh, seeming nepotism, if you call it that way. People fail one area is neglected and what have you. That is exactly what we inherited in Kogi State. And today, not only the major tribes, but including all other uh, minor tribes in Kogi State, not only in the tribes that are resident in Kogi State, or that are indigenous to Kogi State, including even residents. Let me even, it will interest you that even other tribes like Sovyoba, the Igbos, the Fulanis, we inculcate them in our traditional councils from local to the states. In effect, in every either local or area traditional council, or even the state traditional council, there is a representative of the Igbos, the Yoruba, the House of Solaris, and other tribes in our traditional councils. And that's why we are having the various things we are doing today. So there's no cause you know, for any complaint. So every tribe is completely carried along. We ensure that there's no discrimination whatsoever. 
uh, the importance of radio trance. Wants to know how, what are we doing to build an institution that will uplift this administration, not serve. I'll give you just one example. That when we came on board, we are aware that uh, the larger population is made up of youths, and of course women. And there has always been this uh, issue of police or law enforcement brutality on the citizens. Sometimes, immediately I assume the office, I will have to begin to intervene in such areas. So what we quickly do was to come up with what we call Public Defender and Citizens' Rights Commission. We conceptualize that idea and commission. We sent an executive bill to the State House of Assembly. It was passed into law. I signed that particular bill into law. And immediately we constituted that commission. We ensure that we automate the civil service system, whereby not even the government will just sit down and sign a letter that this person should be employed in the Kogi State Civil Service. It is so automated that from the very first day you enter or you join our civil service, you will know when you are going to exit. The system will naturally exit you. So, no civil servant or no any individual or no official or any civil servant that can just impute name into our payroll, Kogi State Civil Service payroll, and begin to derive certain benefits they don't know. I must go to end. They asked the governor to further engage the federal government to fix bad rules to encourage more investors into the state. Governor Yaya Bello, who has continued to advocate against fake news, especially on social media, said it is ubiquitous nowadays, whether it is rumor mongering, dangerous in windows, character assassination, or other forms of inaccurate reportage. The problem is so endemic that in Q3 2020 alone statistics show that there were 1.8 billion engagements with fake news on Facebook alone. Nigeria, like many countries, has fallen victim to it many times, sometimes with a devastating loss of lives and property. He called on the press to do the needful. The press is therefore one of the inescapable hallmarks of modern society, and in particular, the custodian of public perception. What a divine responsibility. However, the press is useful only to the extent that it functions within the ambit of verity and veracity, and in line with the demand of propriety. It must regulate itself with the help of the law to avoid malfunction. Practitioners must recognize the due, that due to the incredible powers which society has entrusted to them, there is a corresponding demand for responsibility, ethics, and professionalism in the exercise of those power by journalists. Necessity is therefore laid on the real journalists to stand up and be counted when it comes to taking back their profession from the quacks and the hacks specifically, especially the myriad of unregulated persons armed with internet-enabled devices who haunt the media space, especially on social media. Governor Bello said part of the media's attribute are to build a united citizenry, promote democracy, advocate for good governance and leadership, not to destabilize the peace of the nation or promote hatred amongst the people. Right Reverend George Bako, award-winning journalist, including National Organizing Committee member, commented, the Constitution has given the fourth estate of the realm the powers to, as it were, our responsibility, power and responsibility to enable the politicians to do well. We can say that uh, America took so long, including civil war. So we too have had us except that we have not learned enough from 
the experience of the civil war. But God will open our eyes so that our inner eyes and inner hearts will be able to move the country forward through our positive criticisms and suggestions. Oh, 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 hate speech. Hate speech is a major concern, not just for individuals. Uh, it's, it is really destructive and I think that broadcasters should be very watchful. Um, fake should be the watchword for them. Uh, you must thoroughly verify uh, stories before you publish them. We have been coming to Kogi State long before your administration. Well, this is my first time coming since you became governor. I want to say that Entering local jail today, you know, I saw some very uncommon transformation. Um, you can see clearly the difference between the trained journalist and the untrained journalist. The trained journalists work by ethics, by the code of the practice. But the social media has created a big, big fundamental problem. And how do we deal with that? Somebody will go into the back room of his house, concoct a news without being properly trained and spread false news, rumors, and what have you. So for this country to progress, the younger ones must take the responsibility to go to NIJ, to go to any institution of learning where journalism or broadcasting is, is, is being taught. Let them learn, because honestly, we are not very, very careful. And government does something fundamental about this issue of fake news and fake and quacks who are pervading the whole profession. Something fundamental, fundamentally wrong may likely happen to this country, and we don't pray for that. Fatima Yakub reporting for MLC TV. The senator representing Kogi West, Smart Adeyemi, reacted over the presentation of a budget of 82 billion naira for the procurement of mosquito nets by the Ministry of Health. Senator Smart Adeyemi queried, how would a minister propose 82 billion naira for procurement of mosquito nets and a sector as important as the solid minerals given 10 billion or 11 billion naira? He said a Jakuta iron and steel complex that can give jobs to about 50,000 Nigerian youths is lying fallow. A good budget must not be just for expenditures. A good budget must be a budget that is targeted towards uh, wealth creation so that you can provide jobs for people who are unemployed and you can help to accelerate socioeconomic development of your nation. Today, the kind of budgeting system we have is that of the one we inherited from the military. It's not a democratic uh, budgeting system that we have. A democratic budgeting system is that system that we allow inputs for nooks and corners of the country of issues of national interest. Senator Smart called on the federal government to appraise its economic team. I'm of unemployed people, and you are bringing the budget system that is so annoying, so questionable, so dubious. Now, how do you justify a ministry in Nigeria asking for the Senate to approve 82 billion to buy nets, mosquito nets? This is money that is more than enough to start or at least give appreciable uh, improvement on our United State complex. And I think first and foremost, we need to have a, a ministry for state development in Nigeria. He said the best way of doing this is to remove whatever bottleneck hindering continuation of work on Ajakuta steel complex and get it completed. If you have asked us in Kogi State, what should be our, what will be our priority in terms of 2022 budget? We'll tell you come and complete our state complex. Not for the sake of Kogi State, but Nigeria itself. This is a complex that will provide about 60,000 jobs, about 20,000 engineers and technicians. And you ask a question, the economy team of Mr. President, are they Nigerians? If they are Nigerians, it means they are not in tune with the reality of this country today. The Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, on Monday, turned the sword for the construction of the presidential wing of the 21 billion Naira 14-bed state house clinic in Abuja. Speaking at the brief ceremony, Gambari said the clinic, when completed, will provide the needed Medicare for the Nigerian president, vice president, and other government officials. The chief of staff to the president, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, on Monday, 
turned on the sword for the construction of the presidential wing of the 21 billion 14 bed state house clinic in Abuja. Speaking at the brief ceremony, Gambari said the clinic, when completed, will provide the needed Medicare for the Nigerian president, vice president, and other government officials. He therefore urged the construction company, Julius Beja Nigerian PLC, handling the project to commence work immediately and also work hard to complete the project within the time frame of one year. Earlier, the permanent secretary in charge of the State House, Tijani Umar, said the groundbreaking ceremony was very important. According to him, in line with the approved timeline for the construction of the presidential wing of the State House Clinic, we will do the foundation laying ceremony and from here move forward with the full construction activity. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, said the groundbreaking was a historical day for the health sector in Nigeria. Additional stated that this facility will serve a lot of people, including sitting presidents of Nigeria, visiting presidents, and senior members of the State House. Everybody that will come to use this facility will find Sukkah. He added that the clinic will contain 14 bed facilities with a total area of 2,700 square meters, with underground facilities, first floor, two number operating theaters, two number executive suits, two VIP, two isolations, and one number of six bed isolation area in the building. Laboratory healing garden is also included. Pharmacy x-ray facilities are all planned for the clinic. Yobi State Governor and Chairman APC Caretaker, Extraordinary Convention, Planning Committee, Mai Malabani, has approved the sum of 422 million naira for payment of pension and gratuity to 359 local government retirees in the 17 local government councils. The approval stated is to cover the payment in respect of BAT 44, validated for the settlement of families of 89 deceased staff amounting to 125 million plus and 270 living retirees amounting to about 296 million naira. This was contained in a press statement signed by the director of press and media refers to the governor, Comrade Mohammed Maman, which was made available to journalists. Maman informed that the beneficiaries were carefully screened after submission by the Office of the Auditor General, local government, to ensure payment of only genuine beneficiaries. The payment of these benefits, according to Maman, will no doubt contribute to the well-being of the beneficiaries and their families after retirement from service. The Governor of Mai Malabani administration, he said, has maintained a lean position in the payment of salary, pension and gratuities. The National Union of Pensioners had recently appreciated the Governor with an award in appreciation of his commitment to paying of pension and gratuity. The Kogi State Commissioner of Finance, Budget and Economic Planning, Asiwa Juasiri Idris, has made clarification before the House of Assembly that the state never had any fixed account in the Stellen Bank as being alleged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He made the clarification on Tuesday following the invitation of some state government officials to brief the Assembly of the issues surrounding the alleged 20 billion naira belonging to the state government with the finance commissioner insisting for the opt-in time that the state have no fixed account in Sterling Bank. The Commissioner Accountant General Alhaji Jibril Momo, State Auditor General Alhaji Yakubu Okala and other relevant staff from the Ministry of Finance and the Office of the Accountant General and the general manager of Stelling Bank of Stelling Bank were in the assembly to provide clarification to the issue of 20 billion naira, which the EFCC purportedly freezed initially through court injunction and later in their own knowledge withdrew the same case. Speaking to the assembly members, Asiwa Juidri said the facility in that sum collected from the bank via the approval of CBN 2019 has since been used for the purpose intended salary payment and other overheads. As a state, we are known for transparency 
accountability and efficiency in funds management as it has become a culture under Governor Yaya Bello that cannot be rubbished in the mud easily. The project coordinator, Nigerian Erosion and Watershed Management Project, New Map, Barrister Ladia Ahmed Chatu has reiterated the agency's commitment to ensuring quality and standard in project execution. Barrister Ladi gave the assurances when she emerged as the most distinguished woman personality of the year. In Kogi State, stressed that no effort will be compromised in ensuring that issues of erosion and in making the environment safe for living is sustained by the agency. Making the presentation, Barrister Zakios Dare Michael, publisher of the Stewardship Global News Limited, described the Kogi New Map project coordinator as a symbol of excellence, hard work with sense of commitment to service to God and humanity in project execution. Barisaladi emerged top to win the Stewardship Global News Limited Award for 2021 from amongst women chief executives, political appointees, heads of MDAs in Kogi State, described the recognition done to her as the efforts of Governor Yaya Bello towards making life more meaningful and habitable for the people. The project coordinator said the agency, through the support of the state government in the payment of her counterpart funds, working in partnership with the World Banks, has made interventions in several towns and communities towards controlling erosion in the land and land reclamation. She added that the agency has equally intervened by providing light, weather stations, amongst other several positive impacts in communities of the state. She dedicated the award to Governor Yaya Bello for his own relentless support that he has given the Kogi State new map. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has felicitated with the Sultan of Sokoto and President General of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, NSCIA, Mohammed Saad Abubakar III on his 15th anniversary on the throne adding that the Sultan has continued to play a remarkable role in the country by preaching peace and harmonious coexistence all across the governor. Adding that the Sultan has continued to play a remarkable role in the country by preaching peace and harmonious coexistence all across the country. The governor in a press release signed by his chief press secretary, Onogu Muhammad noted that the Sultan's 15 years reign as the spiritual leader of Muslims in Nigeria, he has been a role model on mutual understanding amongst people of diverse faiths in the country. He alluded that the royal father has used his platforms to preach love amongst the people of the country, irrespective of tribe or religion. Hence, through his advocacies, severe crisis has been doused and many others laid to rest. The governor added that as a traditional leader, he has pushed vigorously for the welfare of his people while serving diligently in building trust between the north and the south of the nation. He noted that the traditional ruler stands tall in the League of Royal Fathers whose impact was felt and his voice audibly heard because of his sincere concern for the nation, noting that despite being a religious and traditional leader, he often makes relevant counsel on issues of national interests. Governor Bello urged the Sultan to continue to play the roles he was known for as a father whose key interest was uniting the nation across ethnic and religious lines while he prayed for God to grant him many more years in good health for the years ahead. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has at last in Abuja broken its silence on the alleged unlawful invasion of Mary Odili of the court by unknown security operatives, describing it as an impunity taken too far. The Apex Court warned that the judiciary should not be misconstrued by any individual or institution of government as the weeping child among the three arms of government. In its first reaction to the ugly situation, the Supreme Court in a statement by its Director of Press and Information Dr. Akonde Festus said that the attack was uncivilized and shameful show of primitive force on innocent judicial officers. 
Akande said they are alarmed with the news of the unwarranted and despicable raid on the official residence of one of our senior justices in the Supreme Court. Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odeli on Friday, 29th October 2021, in a gestable manner. The attack unfortunately depicted a gory picture of war by some armed persons suspected to be security operatives representing different agencies of government who seemed to have come to kill and maim their target under the guise of undertaking a search whose warrant was questionable and baseless. This incident brought back, rather painfully, the ugly memory of the October 2016 midnight invasion of the homes of our respected justices with no satisfactory explanations as to the true motive behind such brazen assault on our collective sensibility. Speaking further, call up on the Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to rise up to the occasion by carrying out a discreet investigation and make his findings known to the Nigerian public with a view to bringing the perpetrators to justice as quickly as possible. Here you're watching MLC TV News. We'll go on a short break. We've got more stories when we come back. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, written everywhere, informing everyone. The Lagos State Government is setting up an independent panel to probe the collapse of the 21-story building on Gerard Road, Ikoyi. Members of the panel will be drawn from the Nigerian Institute of Architects, NIA, Nigerian Institute of Town Planners, NITP, Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE, and other professional bodies. It will independently investigate the remote and immediate causes of the incident and make recommendations on how to prevent future occurrence. The investigation is not part of the internal probe already been conducted by the government. Governor Babajide Sanwolu has said the government will surely find out what went wrong and punish those indicted. The governor, as a first step, has directed that the general manager of the Lagos State Building Control Agency, LAS BCA, Mr. Bolahon Oki, an architect, be suspended from work immediately. The suspension is indefinite. More equipment and personnel have been deployed in the site to save more lives. Nine persons, all men, have been pulled out of the rubble alive. They have been taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, 14 others were brought out dead. The Deputy Governor, Dr. Kandri Obafemi Hamzat, was today at a site to encourage rescuers and comfort relations of those trapped in the rubble. Dr. Hamza left the site for the Lagos Island General Hospital to see the survivors. The government will embark on further foundation and borehole acidic level tests to ascertain the impact on the collapsed building. These tests, particularly the borehole acidic level, is important for the entire Gerard Road and adjoining areas. And now to the foreign news. A bill to protect millions of pupils in England from the disaster of future school and college shutdowns is being heard in the Commons on Wednesday. Robert Halfon, chairman of the Commons Education Committee, is presenting a bill arguing schools must remain open as they are essential infrastructure. Mr. Halfon wants ministers to consult the Children's Commissioner and allow MPs a vote on any future closure plans. The government maintains COVID-linked closures have been a last resort.
School closures since the start of the coronavirus pandemic have resulted in children losing around 58% of all classroom time. There was one period of lockdown in England from March to July 2020 and a further period at the beginning of 2021. This has led to children missing huge chunks of their education and has had an impact on mental health and well-being. Mr. Halfen says such a huge decision should not be taken by ministers alone. The Sudanese Prime Minister ousted in an army coup last week wants detainees released and governing bodies restored before he will enter into a new dialogue. His office said on Wednesday, denying a report he had agreed to lead a new government. Abdallah Hamdok has been under house arrest since his government was toppled on October 25th by military chief General Abdel Fatal al bohan in the coup which derailed a transition towards civil rule and led to Western donors to freeze aid. Bohan said last week he wants to form a new government of technocrats and that Hamdok could return to lead it. Mediation efforts have been on the way for several days in search of a negotiated way out of the crisis. A source close to Hamdok told Reuters Mediated talks were ongoing, but no deal had been reached. Quoting unarmed sources, the Saudi-owned Al Arabiya TV said earlier on Wednesday that Hamdok had agreed to return to lead government. Al Hadath TV, an affiliate of Arabiya, reported Hamdok wanted political detainees released as a condition. However, his office denied he had agreed to return. Volker Peters, the UN Special Representative to Sudan, said on Monday that Sudanese and international mediation efforts were expected to bear fruit in the coming day. Over now to Ali Nasir on Sports Today. Now Sports Updates. In football. Antonio Conte, 52, the, has been appointed as the new manager to reign at Tottenham. He takes over from Nuno Santo, who has been given the matching order after a woeful start to his season. The Italian tactician has been the talk of football world. In another development in Newcastle, Unai Emery has officially ruled himself out of Newcastle job. He said that he is grateful for the interest that the club has shown unto him. But he is comfortable and so he has communicated to Fernando Roy, his decision to want to continue being part of this project for the commitment and respect that he perceived from the club and from his players. In the Champions League match played Tuesday night, Cristiano Ronaldo's stunning performance for Manchester United gave them a 2-2 draw. After he equalized in the first by scoring two goals, after he equalized by scoring two goals to equalize the match against Atlanta. Other matches played Chelsea, Juventus, Bayern and Barcelona. They all won their encounter. And this has given Bayern and Juventus to have qualified for the last 16. Other matches that will be played tonight. Real Madrid meets Shakhtar Donetsk. Milan vs Porto. Sheriff vs Inter Milan. Dortmund vs Ajax. Sporting CP vs Versiktas. Liverpool vs Atletico Madrid. Leipzig will host PSG. And Man City takes on Club Bridge. That is Sports Update. I'm Aliu Nasir reporting for MSC TV. And thank you for that update. Now we go over to Matthias Ayodeji for Entertainment News. The 29th edition of the Nigerian Media Merit Award, Elden Lokoja, was wrapped up with an outstanding performance from award winning singer The Bunch, aka the Coco Master. The audience were so excited when the Coco Master stepped into the hall to spice up the event with glamour and good music. The Oliver Twist Corner showed his musical progress as he trailed journalists and top government officials with a series of his top hit songs. Ah! 
Revanch dance with fans and dignitaries, among which was the host governor of the 29th NMMA, Governor Yaya Bele of Kofi. Youngest, youngest, let me walk you down to your seat now. When I say, oh, make some noise for you. Nigeria Media Merit Award is an annual event organized to reward hard work and efficiency amongst journalists cut across the print and electronic media. That is all on entertainment news today. Matthias Zaidi, Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Back to our caster for more stories. Thanks for the update. A birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday is the most important milestone in a person's life. Your birthday
They all pray to God to give her more wisdom and strength to continue her good works. On this special day that uh, marks her birthday, we pray to God to always sustain her, to elevate her. May she continue to grow from grace to grace. May she continue to flow in the ocean of love and mercy and abundance of Almighty God. May no evil eye be able to see her. May no evil mouth be able to speak evil about her. May lines fall in pleasant places for her. Whoever she will meet to be ready to help her. Pray, today is her birthday. I wish her long life and prosperity. She's a very good woman. She's my boss and also my mom. She's good and nice to everybody. Sorry, Mom, I'm praying for the upliftment of the MSC TV. Fit Abdugafa reporting for MSC TV. And that is today's news package. Join us tomorrow via the same channel. For sponsorship and advert placement, call the numbers displayed on your screen. You can also visit our social media handles, Facebook MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021, YouTube Malachi TV. I am Morno Balagubo. Thanks for staying with us.